And so my goal for this talk is to communicate to you the evidence that I and my organization, OpenAI, have, have been gathering over the past couple years in order to update us on this question. Um, I'm not here to say that it's definitely going to happen. I'm not here to say that we have high certainty, because we really don't. Um, but instead, I'm, I'm here to say that, that given the facts that we see in front of us right now, uh, that it becomes really hard to confidently rule out general intelligence happening in the near term. Um, and you know, I think AGI is, is this thing that everyone has a bit of a different picture of what it is. Again, it's this very intuitive thing for many of us. You know, we all are intelligent beings. We feel that we have, we have some you know, understanding of what intelligence is, but to really define it is another thing. Um, you know, the, the definition we use at, at OpenAI is highly autonomous systems that outperform humans at most economically valuable work. Now, there's four areas of evidence that I want to go into. The first of these is lessons from history of science. You know, it's very tempting just to say, let's well, just go to the experts, and whatever the experts say, uh, that we should listen to that with 100% confidence. Um, but history of science has, has other things to say, and it's interesting to, to look at some of the predictive failures and to, to hear some echoes of the kinds of arguments people have made uh, in, in terms of, of what we hear in today's general intelligence conversation. Uh, so in 1901, you have Simon Newcomb, who thought that he'd proven that heavier-than-air flight was totally impossible. Uh, you know, in 1908, he heard about the Wright Brothers flight. He said, all right, it's possible, but never going to be commercially important because there's no way you're ever going to be able to scale to both a passenger and a pilot. Uh, in, after World War II, you had both the Americans and Russians looking at German V2 technology. Uh, they both wanted to do the same thing. They wanted to build ICBMs, which meant they were going to have to build a 200-ton rocket. Uh, that meant scaling up the V2 by 10x. Uh, the Americans looked at that. They were like, no way. Totally abandoned long-range rockets for the next half decade. The Russians said, all right, guess we're going to build a giant rocket. Um, fortunately, no one ever used this stuff for military purposes. But when the space race came along, the Russians said, well, we do have this giant rocket. And that's how they got to space first. Uh, you know, you also have people like, like Woolley, who was a very well-respected astronomer uh, in the UK. In uh, 1936, he wrote a scathing review of a rocketry book saying this stuff is all bogus, uh, even though they make this appeal saying that, well, people thought flight was bogus. This is really bogus. Uh, 20 years later, same tune saying space flight's utter bilge. Uh, and then, you know, one year later, you have Sputnik 1 launch. <laughs> 